Anything at all on your heart. I've got just a few words to say. Uh, I wouldn't have had but a few words if uh, y'all hadn't said a thing, but I've got just a few words to say. In the book of uh, Mark, in the fourth chapter, we're going to read just a short reading lesson. We just ask you to bear with us just a few minutes is all that, that I'm going to need. Verse 35 of this fourth chapter says, And at that same day when evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. There arose a great storm of wind and waves and beat into the ships so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they wake him up and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, said it to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Reading those verses, 35 through 41 of this fourth chapter of Mark, we left here last Sunday and all I've done other than cough is try to pray. Lord, what, what do they need? Doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me what it is. Uh, doesn't matter if it's five minutes or 105. Uh, time, as y'all know, don't mean nothing to me when it comes to trying to preach. Yeah, no, I ain't worried about that. Um... And the thought kept coming to me over and over, and it's rolled in my heart all week. What are you afraid of? Now, we look here in these scriptures, and, and I don't believe he's talking to lost people, but I know lost people have got something to be afraid of. Doesn't be mentioned here. They've got something to be afraid of. Um, a lot of the world don't want lost to be afraid, but I do. I want them to be afraid. I want them to be afraid to die. I want them to be afraid when the car cranks up, wonder if they don't make it home. I want them to be afraid when they lay down at night, wonder if I don't wake up again. I want them to be afraid when the thunder rolls, wonder if the Lord is going to take me out of this world. I want them to be afraid. I want them to be afraid when they pull in the parking lot here. I want them to be afraid when they hear the, hear the first song sung, don't you? When people get down to pray and they start praying and the power of God is in it, I want these sinners to be afraid. When the preaching is going on, not because it's me, any man, I want them to be afraid. I want there to be power and spirit in it. I want them to be afraid. I want them to know and they ought to know what they're afraid of. And what they're afraid of is dying without God. Amen. Even the sinner knows that if they die, they'll go to hell. Man, it don't matter if they're a good little boy or a good little girl on mom and daddy's side or mine as far as that goes. If they die, they'll go to hell. And so I know what they're afraid of. I know what they need to be afraid of, don't y'all? But what are y'all afraid of? What is it that you're so afraid of? What is it that is, is so uh, uh, restraining to us? It's got a hold of us. What is it that, that gets a hold of us? Because fear, doubt in the Lord causes fear. Did you know that? When we don't have faith in Him, it will cause us to fear things. When we're not prayed up, when we're not close to the Lord, and we float away from Him a little bit, we'll start noticing things and they'll bring fear to us, an uneasiness to us, uh, uh, an anxiousness in us. Well, I can tell you, we look here and we find this lesson, they is all in the boat. And I'm telling you what, we're in the same boat. Yeah. We're all that's been saved in the same boat together. Ain't no big ones. Ain't no little ones. We're all exactly the same. And I'm going to tell you what. The Lord's in the boat with us. And He's going to take us to the other side. But it might get bumpy along the road. We might have some bumps. If you think it's going to be easy and there'll never be a time for you of fear and trouble, then you've got it wrong. You don't know that that's wrong. You don't know that you have worries. You don't know that you have troubles. You don't know that you don't know what's coming. And that gives you trouble and fear about you. But I've got some news for you. We ain't in the boat alone. 
Our Lord is with us. The scripture says in Hebrews 10, uh, 2 in there, I believe it's the 10th verse, says He is the captain of our salvation. He's the captain of the boat that I'm in. Here in this scripture, it says He was there. I was a, a wind come up and there was water. And I've seen Him. I've seen videos. I've been out on the beach in Oregon and I've watched those waves just get up high. Watch them get up high, and I've seen videos of big cargo ships, and they'd go down, way down, and then they'd see these big waves come up. It doesn't matter the size of you. I'm going to tell you what, the storms of this life will toss you around. You ever been tossed around? Are you being tossed around right now? Is there something that is causing you fear? These men were no different than you and I. They didn't want to die. They were saved men, but they didn't want to die. They were afraid for their very lives. I'm going to tell you what, the last year, that's we've been paralyzed with fear. I got news for you. We ain't getting out of here alive. We ain't getting out of here alive. I ain't getting out of here alive. We're going to die one way or the other. We're going to have to die if time goes on. But they were afraid to die. They weren't supermen. They weren't above the natural feel of, of things. And here all this is going on. You know, I used to, uh, at work, uh, uh, when I get excited and tore up about something, I want everybody else to be tore up. I want them to be as tore up as I am. And more times than not, they're not. You know, the Lord wasn't as near as tore up about what was going on as they were. He knew He had a handle on it the whole time. I'm going to tell you what, we need to look to the Lord, when they were, I'm sure they worked and they labored and they fretted, and then they turned to the Lord, they went down to Him, He was asleep on a pillow. Now our Lord ain't asleep. No, no. He is ever awake and ever watchful. And they said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? Don't you care we're in the shape we're in? Why in the world are you not doing something about all this? Yeah. That's what they really wanted to know. Yeah. Why are you letting this happen? I've got more whys than I've got answers, don't y'all? Yeah. I've got a whole lot more whys than I've got the answers to those whys. He rose up. I'm glad when I'm at my lowest and I'm at my highest need, He don't take long to answer. Yeah. He don't take long. He rose right up. He walked out there. He said, Peace. Be still. Yeah. Calmed it. Yeah. Calmed it. Just peace be still. Now, I don't believe there was a ripple. No. I don't believe there was a gust of wind. I don't believe even the slightest breeze. I believe that water just stopped. Stopped on a dime, as we say sometimes. Just come to a halt. He said, peace be still. Then he looked around and he says, why are you so fearful? Why? Why are you still feel for it? Why do you have no faith? Why they stood there, it says that this made them exceedingly fearful, but really that fear there, how it's used, they were in awe. That the Lord could come and He could come up out of the in the mist and He could calm anything. He had that kind of power. I want you to know just, just what's on my heart is the Lord says, I'll calm your fears if you'll just ask me. I'll take whatever it is that's troubling you and I'll take care of it if you'll just give it to me. Don't hold on to it. Just give it to me. Trust me with it. Trust me to calm it and I can calm anything. Anything. He has the power to do anything. The Scriptures teach me over in the book, I, I might turn to this one. Over here in 1 John, in the 4th chapter, it tells us that God is love. The verse 18 says, There is no fear in love. I have prayed and prayed this week that God will pour your hearts full of the Spirit of God. That He'll take those cups and He'll fill them up and He'll get them to the brim that that Spirit will bring joy to your heart. 
tears to your eyes will vanquish all the fear that is in your mind. All the storms that's around. I'm going to tell you what, when the power of God comes on the scene and He fills our hearts up with love, there ain't room for nothing else. There ain't room for anything else. There ain't room for doubt. There ain't room for fear. There ain't room for hesitation. When the Lord fills us up, I'm going to tell you what it'll be. There'll be fire and love there. Now I'm going to tell you what. We need a dose over here at Friendship Church. We need a dose of the old cup filled up. Because I know you've got troubles. I don't even have to know what they are to know you've got troubles. We've all got troubles. we got things that worry us. Things that are out of our control. It's easy for me to tell you, well, just trust the Lord in the fear. Y'all tell me something, I pray for me, and I trust the Lord. Well, that's easy. I ain't in your shoes. Ain't it? It's easy for somebody that ain't going through what you're going through to tell you to trust the Lord. But I want to tell you, the Lord says, I know what you're going through. You've had somebody let you down. There ain't nobody been let down more than the Lord. you hurting on the inside. There ain't nobody been more grieved than the Lord. You're troubled. You ain't got nobody around. Uh, you've been tossed to and fro. I'm going to tell you what. The Lord knows it all. There ain't a thing He can't deal with. Ain't a thing. There ain't a sympathy He can't have for you. Ever feeling. Only thing He has never done is doubt. Never doubted and never lied. Never doubted and never lied. All confidence is what he's got. What you so afraid of? You afraid to step out there and do what the Lord wants you to do? You know what? When it got right down to it, he said, Lord, my Father, let this cup pass from me. Lord, that Father had something for him to do. And when it got down to it, if there had been a one, he wouldn't have done it. Fair to be a while. But there wasn't no other way, and he knew that. I'm going to tell you what. I pray that the Lord burdens every last one of y'all down, that there ain't no way for you to get out of it. I pray that the Lord gets you right there and He weighs you down. And I know that the devil's going to be there. He's going to tell you, well, they'll think you're crazy. He's going to give you every reason why to not do something. But I pray that when He gets down there to it, that you'll say, I ain't got no choice but to do it. You do that, you let her all go. Let her all go. You can't serve the Lord the way we've been trying. You can't serve the Lord one foot in, one foot out. We got to be both feet in this. We got to be full throttle down, putting our trust in the Lord and let Him have it up. If we can't come that way, then we're going to sputter along. We're going to sputter along. I've had a vehicle that was missing, sputtering. I got there, but it wasn't pretty. I'm going to tell you what, the church can get in that shape if we ain't careful. We ain't get to sputter. We get in there a little, but we ain't getting there. So you need it hitting on all cylinders. We need it tuned up. And I'm going to tell you what, we need to get away from here today. We need to go somewhere between now and next Sunday. We need to get to pray. We need to say, Lord, what can I do for you? Let's get down to business with the Lord. That size crowd we had in here last Sunday, oh, that was awesome and everything. I'll take this size crowd with the Lord in it any day. Amen. Want the ones that want to be here, that their heart is in it, that desire to be at the house of God. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're afraid of something, He can take care of it. When I was a little boy, I was a scared of the storms. Oh, I was scared of them. I'd hear them in the night, and I'd get out of bed, and I'd go in there to mom or daddy. And I'd say, Well, y'all come lay down with me, I'm afraid. Now, I knew Mom and Daddy couldn't stop the storm. But I won't do near me. And they'd get up out of their sleep. And they'd come in there and they'd lay down in my bed with me and I'd crawl up, up right up next to them. They'd put that arm around me and I'm going to tell you what, I felt so safe. 
I felt like nothing could touch me. That mom or her daddy was there taking care of me and nothing could happen to me when I was right there in that. That love that I knew they had for me, I wasn't afraid of anything. I'm going to tell you what, sometimes I have to crawl up in the Lord. Now I have to say, Lord, I'm afraid. This storm is raging and I can't stop it. I know He can, but you know what? He don't always stop every storm. He don't always stop every one of them. But son, He'll see you through to the other side of it. He'll stay right up close to Him. Well, there's times, there's times I've had to get up close to Him, have you? Get up close to Him and say, Oh Lord, and Him just feel Him around me. All that fear is just gone. It just melts away. Love, peace, joy is all that's left when it melts away. Did you know that? That's all He can get you. He fills you up that. You've got love and you've got peace. You've got joy. I'm going to tell you what. They ain't not running for anything else. I'm going to tell you what. I'd sure love to have a dose more of it, wouldn't you? I'd love to see us in that shape, not just in Shift Church. I pray that for all the churches because I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot to cloud our mind. We need a good dose of that. You know, we get all this pollen in here and we'll say a good rain will come, a good wind will come and clear that air, right? Clear that air. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit can clear that air. We need to talk to the Lord. We need to get where He needs to be. He said, why are you so fearful? If you'll just bring it to Him, He'll take care of it. Say, so, well, you, but you don't understand. It can't be fixed. It can't be took care of. It can't, ain't never done nothing. I'm going to tell you what the Lord will do. He can do anything that you ask Him to do. If you ask Him to believe it, He can fix it. He can fix it. That's all I got. I'm done. If y'all got something on your heart to do, then I ask you to do it. Y'all want to shake hands, shake hands. Y'all want to run out the door like some did last Sunday? There's the door. But I'm going to tell you what. We need to be more worried about staying in here than running out there. Amen. Lord sees that too, don't He? Sees that too, don't He? I thought I'd wait a few Sundays before I said something about that. But I'm going to tell you what. That bothered me. Amen. That bothered me. It worries me. Uh, wonder if I ran out the door. Y'all would, would talk to me like a dog if I ran out the door. I'm going to tell you what, we need to get in here, both feet in, roll these sleeves up and get to work. There's a long time between now and June. And we ain't in any shape for a meeting based off of what I'm saying. We're going to have to get to work. We're going to have to get to work. Do y'all agree? Do y'all agree back here? We're going to have to get to work? Yes, sir, we're going to have to get to work. If we're going to be pleasing to our God, we're going to have to get to work. Why are we saying whatever you feel like you need to do?